My lords, the first fleet under my command has, after 252 days at sea, reached its destination, the penal colony of New South Wales. All 11 ships, including the convict transports, survived the journey, and we have found a harbour with a fine deep anchorage and a spring of fresh water sufficient for our needs. I have honoured this place with the name of Sydney for His Excellency the Home Secretary. After some unseemly behaviour when the female felons came ashore, I chose the following day to assemble all survivors of the voyage, to raise the flag here at Sydney Cove and to proclaim the founding of the new colony. Though we are few in number, we are high in expectation. I will keep your lordships acquainted with our progress in the days to come. Your obedient servant, Philip. Well, gentlemen, time to go down. Majesty George III, by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, defender of the faith, proclaims as follows. We appoint and constitute Arthur Philip to be our Captain General and Governor-in-Chief in an overall territory called New South Wales. And we do hereby give and grant unto the said Arthur Philip full power and authority to judge any offender or offenders in criminal matters and to punish or pardon such or grant reprieve until the intent of our royal pleasure may be known. His Excellency, the Governor. I would like you to recall that you have already forfeited life and freedom to the justice of your country. Yet, by the leniency of English law, you are now so placed that by industry and good behaviour, <coughs> you may in time regain the estimation and advantages of the society of which you have deprived yourself. You have heard the proclamation read to you by the judge advocate. You will therefore be aware that I am invested with a supreme and absolute power which I will not hesitate to use in order to establish a law-abiding and proper community. I would like to... Discipline will be firm, but fair. I will not tolerate immoral behavior. 
the depravity of last night when the women convicts came ashore will not be repeated. The sentries will be ordered to fire on any man forcing his way into the women's quarters. As to the stealing of any article of stock or provision, our future depends on husbanding our scant resources. And anyone found guilty of this crime will be punished with death. Finally, I only wish to say this. We are all strangers in a new land. We will build a town here on the foreshore of this fine harbor. The work will be hard, but not beyond your abilities. I am determined that every man and woman will contribute their share towards making for themselves and the rest of the community a happy and comfortable life. Prepare to fire. Fire! Yul malam ini, way. Kawan, kawan. Betul lah, boh. Kena kuat termala. Kena kuat termala. Mana, way? Mana kuat ter? Masket. Masket. Ada orang tu ngerah, ada tu. Ma, ma, ma. Mas, 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 masket. Masket. Balanda, ni ni galak ramai mana? Balanda, mak. Kakak, mari kita lalui merungi naru jalan jauh. Do you not think so, Captain? Quite so, ma'am. I would caution you against the meat. Sir? The hot weather, ma'am. I fear it's infested with maggots. Well, so much for ceremony, gentlemen. Now we can dispense with parades and set about our prime purpose. Dispense with parades, Your Excellency. Yes, Major Ross. The King. The King. I congratulate you on your men's display, but there are other matters than military exercises for our attention. Discipline, sir, is important. Building, Major, is essential. Fortification, sir. Huts, Lieutenant. Barracks and stores. The winter will be upon us, and we must prepare for it. If we neglect our defences, we place ourselves at risk. The French are still anchored at Botany Bay. The natives could descend in force and wipe out the settlement. I intend to make peaceful approaches to the natives. We are going to explore the harbour and look for more fertile land, plant crops and uh, breed our livestock. It's a question of survival. My Marines, Governor, were not sent out here to be peasant farmers. Your Marines, sir, were sent here to serve His Majesty under my letters of authority. I'm afraid we're ignoring our other guests. A hospital, Mr. Balmain, will replace the present tent as soon as possible. I'm pleased to hear it, sir. We have a great need of it. I hope Your Excellency won't neglect spiritual matters. No, indeed, Reverend. The spade, it seems, is to be mightier than the sword. Gentlemen. Pompous ass. Mr. Tench, sir. For His Excellency. A pension off naval captain. What kind of stupidity is it to place our lives in his hands? Quite. As for peaceful approaches to the natives, we all know they're savages and not to be trusted. <laughs>
when I find him. You're worth it. Get away. Don't! What's your name? Ellen. Ellen Prentice. Yeah. Well, you keep away from those bastards in uniform, got it? No whoring round. You're mine. We'll see. Go away! You'll believe that. Help! Help! What the devil was that? A woman, sir, up there screaming. Well, call out the guard. Find her. What's your name, boy? Johnny Prentice, sir. And he won't do it again, I promise. Speak when you're spoken to. Tell me about the natives, Johnny. They have funny names. Sir. Sir, one is called Arabanu, and another, he's called Benelon, and they have children like me. Only they're black, and we took off our clothes and had a swim. Sir. Sir. Thank you, Major. You like them? Yes. Sir. And they were friendly? Oh, yes. I had things to eat. What things? Sort of berries and bits of trees from below the ground. The tree roots? And fish. And they had some little grubs. Only I didn't eat those. Well, thank you, Johnny. I think you were wise not to eat the little grubs. I'll see he doesn't stray again, sir. Not to punish him. Good night, Johnny. Good night, sir. Well, gentlemen. The boy's a troublemaker and his mother's a slut. I'm not sure I believe you. Arabanu and Benelong. Musical name, sir. And a child can make friends with them. Can we? I find it encouraging, sir. If your excellency will excuse me. Thank you, Major Ross. Can we make friends with them, Mr. Balmain, when we already seem to have divisions among ourselves? Never do that again. See? Never. But, Mama. Get us noticed. That means trouble in this place. <coughs> Getting noticed. <coughs> you hear? Yes, Mama. Oh. Take. 
take heed, love. We've had enough trouble. You and me. Come on now. Get in there. You'll never be fit for civilized man to send them. You won't fall, sir. An agreeable fellow, Gloss. There are damn few of us. There's been another break in. More rations stolen. A few hangings have put a stop to it. Anything else to report, Tench? Then I've been on duty 18 hours. I get some sleep, sir. What's that for? Johnny? Johnny! No, not the boy. Then not me. We'll be free. Over their mountains, they reckon you can reach China. Look, he's only a boy. We can't take him. Don't you understand? We... Oh! Now get back to work. Botany Bay dozen. Twenty five lashes.
I think at least we ought to observe a semblance of justice. I agree. I simply wish to save the judge advocate's time. The man's a constant troublemaker. Your Excellency. Warehouses, stores, but as yet no house of God. If we don't build before the worst of this winter, Reverend, none of us may survive it. But surely, sir, no place on earth stands more in need of spiritual guidance than here. I can offer you a field or a granary as a church, sir. You may more readily fill them with prayers than I can with grain. I feel certain God will understand. I trust so, since we are all in his hands. Good day to you, sir. Good day, Captain Collins. Reverend. I do with convicts who work with such reluctance, and marines whose supervision leaves so much to be desired. If they'd only sent us skilled men. I have to report two prisoners escaped last night. Then send out a search party, Major. I'm afraid we've found them. my point, sir. The natives are barbarians and not to be trusted. Or else they were defending their property, Major. Bury them. See to it. Go near those black heathens again. I'll whip you within an inch of your life. Do you hear me? My dear Lord Sidney. The last of the transports will soon leave with these tidings of our endeavor. 
We have had some trouble with the natives, not always, I believe, of their making. Convinced as I am that peace between us is essential to our existence, I arranged the capture of one of their warriors named Arabanu, with whom we attempted to establish some communication. Unfortunately, after a brief period with us, the poor wretch contracted smallpox and died. As to other matters, we have surveyed the coast and found a fine river which we have named after my Lord Hawkesbury and undertaken journeys to explore and map the territory from the South Head to Botany Bay. The winter here has been a harsh time for us all. Food is desperately short. We catch what fish we can, though it is never sufficient to keep up with our growing needs, and we lack experienced men for this purpose. We have tried to supplement our diet by a species of local game, which the natives call Kangaroo. Filthy stuff. At least it's fresh meat. Fresh, Mr. Balmain. I'd rather take my chance with scurvy. I cannot pretend that we can survive much longer like this. I beg you to send a generous supply of food and warm clothing, as well as any livestock and medicines. Finally, my lord, I pray that with the second fleet be sent free men of farming experience. If we are to have a future here, and I believe we have, it is in their hands. He wants farmers, Mr. Nepean. A penal colony too far for the beggars to get back to England, and he wants farmers. Ha! Gentlemen. The king. The king. The king. king. Though I wish it a more festive occasion. A Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Thanks, Christmas. Sir. A dog couldn't live on this. Shut up and take it. That's all you get. It's supposed to be Christmas. Not in this place. Even less next month. They'd forgotten us in merry old England. Live to see it a starve. Up it! Weeks rations. My last three days. There's other ways. Take that home. For food? Why not? I've got to stay alive. a pound of flour, all right? Old complaint, don't fuss, Mr. Balmain. How is he? He'll live if he's sensible. Major Roster. I'll ask him to come in. That's all, thank you, gentlemen. 
Major, I've considered your complaint. I trust so, Your Excellency. And my order still stands. Officers and Marines will have the same rations as convicts. It's unthinkable. So is starvation. In our present circumstances, no one has a right to more food than anyone else. Criminals have no rights. I shall make the strongest possible protest. I dare say. To the highest authority. Ross, you've opposed me on every issue since we landed here. What am I to do with you? Send me home, if Your Excellency wishes. No. Lieutenant King will go home. He'll go to England and explain to the authorities our plight. If they care. The men are barely fit to work. We cannot survive much longer. King is in charge of Norfolk Island. Exactly. And Norfolk has a richer soil than an abundance of bird life. I intend to dispatch two companies of marines there and 200 convicts. You will relieve King and take command. May I remind you that I am the Lieutenant Governor of New South Wales. And I, Major, am the Governor. HMS Sirius will sail at the end of the week and you will sail with her. Weevils, flies, and theft. Mm. Not only the convicts, the military too. They can't just abandon us. Well, there must be a supply ship soon. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Outside the compound after curfew. I'm not doing anything. Naya. Fifty lashes. They clamp your mouth so you can't scream. They shave your head. No. Please. Be a bit of a waste, wouldn't it? Reckon you and me could come to some sort of arrangement. Show them the fish, Mr. Bradley. Fish. Here are some fish for you. What the devil's the word for fish, Mr. Bradley? Nice fish. Budgery fish. Here they come. Fresh fish. Budgery. Fish. Now, Mr. Bradley. Your hat. Not then the all night. 
Van a contar. Let me through. Let me through. Ven along. Ven. Ven. Hello, Ben along. Ven along. Do you know this man, boy? Yes, sir. Oh, Ben along. Ven 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 Well, he is friendly enough, sir, but not the other, I fancy. Perhaps a drop of wine, Mr. Tench. Uh. 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 Wine, Benelong. Wine. What? Wine. Men of God. Young, young, young. Capu, the men of men of Capu. So much for our French claret, sir. Ah, not for the better way. Yeah, I could. Men of the men of Baran, I Baran, Baran. Ya ikut dulu, ya kalau ke. Tengok ni barang ni, barang ni. Main nak, main nak. There's no trace of him, sir. I've placed the Marine under arrest. Well, at least we've kept the more amiable of the two, sir. How is he this morning? A trifle subdued. I expect it's the wine. We must treat him well. If Your Excellency would care to see, Surgeon Balmain is operating on him. Hmm? A minor operation, I assure you. Hey! Carry on, Mr. Balmain. Good morning, Benilong. Seems to mean father, sir. Or chief. What else have we learned? That he's a lively, good-humoured fellow. And a better patient than some I've treated. Pungwa, him cut hair. Good. <laughs> Did he learn these words so quickly? I suspect he's had a teacher, sir. That that boy. Ah, uh, Prentice, sir. John Prentice. Oh, 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 Don't make him laugh, we'll have an accident. Hey, we'll have to make him laugh. We'll have to make him laugh. It's remarkable, sir. I told you. A dandy. It's not only that, the way he picks up our habits in so short a time. Well, we can't expect too much all at once. The question of leg iron, sir. I don't want him tied, Mr. Johnson. But he'll escape. If he does, we fail. We have to make friends with these people. Yes, sir. For the moment, he'll have a room in my house. Sir! As for food, we can't explain our stringent rations to him yet. He must have what he needs for his health. There'll be uproar, sir. My men won't stand for it. Your men, Mr. Johnston, won't be told. Bingo, one. A sensible suggestion. To friendship, Benelow. Friendship? Be younger, a friend. <laughs> My friend.
What's up? Look at him. Hanging around with that black savage all day. Johnny cares more for that native than he does for me. After all I've done for him. It isn't fair. Walton, Nunca. Walton. Where you point? The governor's new toy. I'm sick of that grinning heathen. And I'm sick of this confounded rain. We're all sick of that. The heat of Christmas when it should be winter. And now this cold again. Ross was right, you know. We'll never settle this wilderness. If only a ship would come. A ship! Our reverend minister prays for it daily. More rum? Uh, no, no, we'd best be getting back. At least most of us, unlike the governor, sleep warm. It's some consolation. Good night. Good night, William. You're angry. Well, I'm not with you, Esther. Who with? With Joseph Banks and Nepean and Lord Sidney and all those fine, upstanding men in England who've forsaken us. Yes, been a long, England, long way. <laughs> Many sunrise. Many. Yeah. His Majesty, King King George lives there. Oh yes, he lives there. Big house. Oh yes, and big tables that held half the pheasant and grouse in the kingdom. No ships with white wing come. No ship. When come? By the grace of God, soon. Oh, it'll be too late. Oh, then I'll run out of If they wanted to work, they're too weak. Enough salt beef until the 2nd of July. That's two weeks. Unless we reduce the rations. Sufficient flour until the 20th of August. And rice or peas until September. That's all, Mr. Miller. That's all, Captain. They say the bush rats are uncommon tasty. I'm obliged to you, Mr. Miller. Mannion, sir, and his son, Patrick. Passengers on board the Lady Juliana. Mr. Mannion, Patrick, you are most welcome. Your Excellency. I bring a personal introduction from Lord Sidney. Splendid. May I present the judge advocate, Captain Collins? Captain, we've long awaited this day. Sir, I think you should have a word to Mr. Mannion. Indeed, we have much to talk about. Supplies, Mr. Mannion. What supplies did the ship bring us? I'm afraid almost none. 
I don't quite understand. My requisitions for food and livestock. Yeah, they were dispatched aboard a supply ship, the Guardian. She should have reached you in February, but apparently she struck ice and sank off the Cape of Good Hope. Two years' provisions. Livestock, food, medicines, clothing, all lost. Come inside, Mr. Mannion. God help us. I doubt he will. It's been a hellish journey, Your Excellency. A nightmare. Two hundred convicts, little or no food left. We found the coast just in time. My dear wife, rest her soul, died of disease on the voyage. My condolences, Mr. Mannion. But no food? No supplies? As I explained, sir, the supplies were in the ship that sank. I'm afraid that all we have brought is 200 hungry wretches. black man at dinner, Papa? Seems he's the governor's guest. As we are. This is a funny place, Papa. Go to bed, Patrick. You must rest. What hour is it? Three of the clock, sir. I beg you, it'll help you to sleep. The dark is too full of fearful dreams. Believe me, Mr. Balmain. Good night, Your Excellency. His Majesty is graciously pleased to approve of your conduct and hopes the considerable supplies aboard HMS Guardian will be put to the best possible advantage. As to the convicts aboard the Lady Juliana and the 1,000 more to be dispatched by the second fleet to Port Jackson, you should make arrangements for their accommodation and employment upon their arrival. I am, sir, your most respectful servant, Sidney. Oh! Who's there? Along. Where is he? Ran off, sir. Said he was hungry. Going back to his people. When I grabbed him, he hit me. Sir. still you and me. That's all there's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> 